This process of constructing sign charts for the first derivative is going to be used to help us identify any local extrema in our function. So that word extrema is just a general term to refer to both maxima and minima, or maximums and minimums. So we want to find any local maximums, any local minimums that occur in our graph. So these local extrema can be identified by considering the behavior of our function around its critical values. So critical values are partition numbers in this case partition numbers for f prime of x that are also in the domain of our function. So we want to identify any partition numbers for f prime, look at the behavior of the function around those points. If those points are also in the domain of our function, then we may have a maximum or minimum occurring. So the first derivative test tells us that for some function that changes from increasing to decreasing, meaning at the peak of this parabola, we would have a local maximum. We can tell that that's occurring by looking at a sign chart for our first derivative and by seeing a change in our first derivative from positive to negative. So meaning that the direction of our function changes. So our first derivative again, indicating our first derivative being positive, indicating that our function is increasing. And then our first derivative being negative, indicating that our function is decreasing. So if we change from increasing to decreasing, we end up with a local maximum. For a local minimum, we need to see a function that changes from decreasing to increasing. So to have a local minimum occur, our sign chart for f prime should have a partition number, and then we should see our values for the first derivative change from negative to positive. So that change from decreasing to increasing. So again, direction changes, but in this case in the other order. So from increasing to decreasing, we get a maximum. From decreasing to increasing, we get a minimum. And the third case, would be where neither of those happen. And that would be a graph like we already looked at, where we have a partition number. So our tangent line is horizontal for a moment, for an instant. But on either side, we see that our first derivative is increasing. Or similarly, if we had a similar type of graph, but in this case a strictly decreasing graph, we could still have a point where our function levels out for an instant. But on either side of that point, our first derivative would be negative. So even though for an instant, our tangent line has a horizontal slope, or is a horizontal line, meaning it has a slope of zero, the function is decreasing on either side. So we don't have a maximum or minimum occurring. So in each case, it's going to be critical that we not only find these partition numbers, but that we construct a sign chart to demonstrate that change in behavior or that lack of a change in behavior. So in example one, we want to find the intervals of decrease, increase and decrease, as well as any local extrema for this given function. So the first thing we need to do is find f prime of x which would be negative 3 plus 2x. Then we need to determine where this function is either equal to 0 or undefined. So we're dealing with a polynomial function. This is going to be defined for all values of x. But we can set it equal to 0, giving us a value of x equals 3 halves as our single partition number to consider. So at 3 halves, our first derivative is equal to 0. So what we'll do is choose test points above and below that value to determine 
what's happening with our derivative function. So we can evaluate f prime at 0, which in this case would give us a value of negative 3. So for any value below 3 halves, our derivative function will be negative. We can also evalu evaluate f prime at x equals 2, which will give us a value of 1, meaning that for any value above 3 halves, our first derivative is positive. So what this means is we can say that our function is increasing on the interval from 3 halves to infinity because that's where our first derivative is positive, meaning our function is increasing and decreasing on negative infinity to 3 halves because starting at negative infinity all the way up to 3 halves, our first derivative is negative, meaning our function is decreasing. We also have the sign of our derivative changing. So our graph is changing directions. We need to classify that as either a maximum or minimum. So what we have is a function that's decreasing, hits this point, and then changes direction to become increasing. So we get a shape that gives us a local minimum. So we have a local minimum at x equals 3 halves. So we find the derivative, identify any partition numbers, construct our sign chart, look to see where the derivative is positive, means our function's increasing, where it's negative means our function's decreasing, and if our function changes signs anywhere, or if our derivative function changes signs anywhere, then we either have a maximum or a minimum occurring at that point. So in example two, we start off with the same process. We find g prime of x, which in this case will be 3x squared plus 6. So we'll take that and set it equal to 0, which will give us 3x squared equals negative 6, or x squared equals negative 6 thirds, which would be negative 2. So in order for x squared to be negative 2, we'd need to be able to take the square root of both sides, meaning x has to equal plus or minus the square root of negative 2. But we can't take the square root of negative numbers, so that can't happen. So essentially 3x squared plus 6 can never equal 0. So we have no partition numbers to consider, but we still want to construct a sign chart. Since there's no partition numbers, we can choose any value that's in the domain of our function. So for instance, we can evaluate the first derivative at 0. And this would give us a result of 6. Since there's no partition numbers, no point where our function can change directions, this means that our function, our derivative function is positive for all values of x. So our function is increasing for all values of x. So our function is going to be increasing from negative infinity to infinity, and there are no local extrema. So in order for our function to change directions, there has to be at least one partition number. If there are no partition numbers, we still need to construct a sign chart and determine whether the first derivative is positive or negative to tell us whether our function is increasing or decreasing. 